Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Motivation for Young Christians. Welcome back, welcome back. Today we'll be diving into John chapter 11, verses 11 to where well, we don't have a finishing verse. We're just going to go with the flow for today. Uh, to begin, we're going to start off with a prayer by Brother Jave, and then to the closing, we're going to do a prayer by me. Heavenly Father, we adore you. We bless you, we honor you, and we give you praise. You are indeed an awesome God, and there is absolutely none like you. Lord, we thank you so much for another day that you have allowed us to see for waking us up this morning. God, as we are here on the Zoom another Saturday to study your word, we pray, Holy Spirit, that you will be with us. Bring forth wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Bring forth revelation. We pray that you will speak to us through this text. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We pray, oh God, that you would have your way throughout this time and help us to walk away, oh God, uh, more knowledgeable, oh Father God, of your word than before. In your name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> amen, amen. Cool. So um, I know you were by yourself last week, so you pretty much opened up the story of um, Lazarus' death, right? Yeah. All right. So we know he has two sisters, Mary and Martha. Yeah. And um, he was sick, and they sent a message to Jesus um, telling him that his friend Lazarus was very sick. Um, Jesus, when he heard about it, said Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. Um, however, he died, right? So let's pick up at 11 and, and see what happens. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Right, cool. So 11 says, uh, then he said, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but now I will go and wake him up. The, the disciples said, Lord, if he was sleeping, he will, get, he will soon get better. They thought Jesus meant Lazarus was simply sleeping, but Jesus meant Lazarus had died. Uh, so he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and for your sakes... Now, this part is crazy. He says, I'm glad I wasn't there, for now you will really believe. Come, let's go see him. But why do why you think Jesus would say, I'm glad I wasn't there? I don't know why I would say it. I just trying to see no dead people. But, <laughs> um, glad I wasn't there, for now you will really believe me. If Jesus was there, I feel like they wouldn't believe that he okay and like nothing wrong with what happened to him. Yeah, okay. that's, that's, that's not that. Okay. Um, here's, a, here's another take. Um, if, if Jesus had been there, then he would have probably healed him. Right? And then they would have never witnessed um, his power to raise from the dead. Right? Uh, but Lazarus died so that Jesus' uh, power of raising, uh, Jesus' power over death um, was an essential display of his power and the resurrection from the dead is a crucial belief in the Christian faith. Jesus not only raised himself from the dead, but he has power to raise others. Um, so if he hadn't let him die, then they would have never knew um, about his power to raise others, right? Um, his death and resurrection doesn't come as yet. So they kind of got um, to see through Lazarus um, that he indeed has power to raise the dead, right? It's not just him resurrecting himself, but he's able to do that for others. I bet if the Pharisee found out, they would not believe that. Huh? No, so I bet if the Pharisee found out, they would not believe that. You know how they are. Right? Um, but, I, you know, I'm, I'm still, I stumble at this text, though. He's like, I'm glad I wasn't there. You know, you wouldn't expect Jesus to say something like that. Yeah. But here again, he goes and he shows himself um, as the all-knowing, the all-powerful, and he do he does um, what's best in the situation, right? Um, so 16 says, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, said to the follow the, his fellow disciples, "Let's go to and die with Jesus." Jesus arrived at Bethany. He was told that Lazarus had already been in his grave for four days. 
Bethany was only a few miles down the road from Jerusalem, and many of the people had come to console Martha and Mary in their loss. When Martha got word that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary stayed in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you only had been here, my brother would have not died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. Yes, Martha said, he will rise when everyone else rises at the last day. And Jesus told her, here's another I am statement. I, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Everyone who believes in me and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this, Martha? And she said, yes, Lord, she told him. I have always believed you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one who has come into the world from God. Then she returned to Mary, and she called Mary aside from the mourners and told her, the teacher is here and wants to see you. So Mary immediately went uh, to, to see Jesus. All right, so uh, what's going on here? Lazarus has been dead for how long now? About four days. Four days. It's a long time, right? And yet he's saying, um, it's cool. He's going to rise again. You can imagine, I wouldn't say he had a nonchalant attitude about it. Like, he's probably just mad too. Like, yo, why y'all worried? Like, like, ain't no wrong with that boy. That boy good. <laughs> fine. Like, why y'all tripping? Like, what y'all crying for? You know what I mean? I can imagine him just mad, cool, calm, and collected. <laughs> right? Um, but here he says, he, he reveals to them another I am statement, who he is. He is the resurrection and the life. Um, Jesus has power over life and death as well as power to forgive sins. And this is from my, my study Bible. It says, this is because he is the creator of life. He who is life can surely restore life. That's a good one. He who is life can surely restore life. Whoever believes in Christ has a spiritual life that death cannot conquer or diminish in any way. Okay? So, you know, when you're saved, we're, we're given eternal life. And even death cannot stop that. Death cannot um, put a hold on that. Okay? Um, that's why he says, anyone who believes in me, uh, though he die, he still lives, right? Um, those are physical may die, we still have spiritual life in Christ, eternal life with Christ, right? Um, it also says, when we realize his power and how wonderful his offer to, to us really is, how can we not commit to live for him? To those of us who believe what wonderful assurance and certainty we have, since I live, Jesus is saying, you also will live, right? And that's the, the assurance that we have for eternal life and that's a wonderful thing to rejoice that even because jesus lived um we live if you heard it if you ever heard the song um, because he lives i can face tomorrow mm -hmm. you know i heard that song in church right so because he lives we live right and and they live and the people around us live um and so that that's what's going on here any anything you want to add in Jesus he be he be confusing me with some of those stuff he said. <laughs> I, I be so I mean I'm a, I understand it, but like you know, saying stuff that Jesus said, you just gotta really like think about it, like. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you explain what I was trying to figure out, so I'm good. Okay. Uh, so now Mary, Mary Martha's posture. Um, one, you can see that she knew. Um, that he was the Messiah. She knew that he was the son of God because she stated that, right? But mm -hmm. even after her brother has been dead for four days, um, pay attention to her attitude, man. Right? She didn't, she wasn't, she didn't come to Jesus like, yo, what's wrong with you? Where were you? Um, yes, she did say, um, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would have, wouldn't have died. But then she said in 22, but even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask, right? And so 
she still believed that some way, somehow, Jesus would intervene. He's able to do that, right? Um, <clears throat> but she probably wasn't thinking oh, that God was gonna or Jesus was gonna raise him from the dead. But she believed some way, somehow, um, that he would intervene, right? So she says, um, whenever when everyone else is everyone else rises at the last day. Um, so she understood, but she must understood. She thought Jesus was referring um, to the general resurrection of the dead at the last day. And that's not what he was talking about. Right? He was talking about doing that miracle or working that miracle now, resurrecting his life right now. Right? So, and it's funny because if you, I remember what scriptures, but we go back, I think it's back, but we'll see it in the coming scriptures. Mm -hmm. um, Mary is, is thought to be the busy one. Like when Jesus visited their house, Lazarus was still alive. I can't remember the story. I don't think the story came already because we haven't spoke about Lazarus. I don't think. Wait, um, what do you mean by busy? We did. No. So there, there's a story when Jesus visits um, their house, the house uh, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Um, Martha, she was the one in the kitchen cooking, and she got upset with her sister Mary because she's like, "Come help me! Come help me! You see all the stuff I'm doing." Um, but Mary understood the importance of that moment, right? She sat at the feet of Jesus and worshiped him, worshiped him. And he said, Martha, pretty much, I'm paraphrasing this. Martha, why are you upset? Your sister has realized the importance of this opportunity or the importance of this time, right? And it's the same for us. Sometimes we get so busy and caught up in our daily lives, right? Cooking, cleaning, cooking, work that we, if we're not careful, we miss Jesus. We miss his presence, right? We miss when he visits and he shows up, right? And so Mary is best known as the one being too busy to sit down to talk with Jesus. But here we see her as a woman of deep faith, right? Her statement of faith is exactly the response that Jesus wants from us, right? And even when a situation looks impossible, and out of control, uh, he still wants us to have faith, right? Even in the unexpected, uh, he still wants us to have faith. And that's tough, right? Because what, what, what can you do a situation like this? A brother died. Oh. Yeah, it's tough. That's tough, right? But still, we see her, as he says, but even now, I know that God will give whatever you ask. See, she's expressing her faith at this point, right? Um, Jesus was not asking if Martha could, Martha believed he could raise Lazarus from the grave. Rather, did she believe that life itself is linked to Jesus? She said, yes, Lord, even though the full implications were beyond her com comprehension, she acknowledged that Jesus was indeed the Messiah, yet she was surprised at the power that he held. Right? So now she sees another dimension of the power of God and what he's about to do. Right? So let's pick up at 30. He says, it says, Jesus had stayed outside the village at the place where Martha met him. When the people who were at the house consoling Mary saw her leave so hastily, they assumed she was going to Lazarus's grave to weep. So they followed her there. When Mary arrived and saw Jesus, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, again, now she says it, right? Lord, only if you only had been here, my brother would have not died. And when Jesus saw her weeping and saw the other people wailing with her, a deep anger welled up within him and he was deeply troubled. Where have you put him? He asked them. Right? And this is um, the shortest verse in the entire Bible, um, 35. They told him, Lord, come and see. And 35 says, then Jesus wept. The shortest verse in the Bible. Right? The people who were standing nearby said, see how much he loved him. But some said, the man healed a blind man. Couldn't he have kept Lazarus from dying? They're really about to get Jesus angry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and 
I'm going to read this. My study Bible says, John stresses that we have a God who cares. When Jesus saw the weeping and wailing, he too wept openly. Perhaps he emphasized with their grief, or perhaps he was troubled at their unbelief. In either case, Jesus showed that he cares enough for us to weep with us in our sorrow. This portrait contrasts with the Greek concept of God that was popular in the day, a God with no emotions and no messy involvement with humans. But here we see many of Jesus' emotions, compassion, indignation, sorrow, and even frustration, right? And it's good to know that there's a scripture that says uh, that God is not out of touch with our infirmities. Right? Um, he understands and he sees and he knows um, what we go through. And so when we feel and we, we hurt, uh, he also hurts, right? But it's for us to know that he's able to get us through, right? So look how quickly some of the people um, turn and they said, uh, where is it? Um, Look, I, so, so some of them said, uh, see how much he loved him, right? But then some of them said, if he healed the blind man, why couldn't he have kept Lazarus alive, right? So some of them were drawn to compassion because they saw him weeping over his, Lazarus was his friend. Mm -hmm. Saw him weeping over Lazarus' life, death. And then some of them quickly like, yo, he healed the blind man. He did this. He cured the man with an, inf an infirm hand. He did so many for, for other people. Why couldn't he have kept Lazarus alive? And how many times in our own personal lives have we witnessed God do something for other people? But when it came to our life, we questioned, God, if you did it for them, why couldn't you have done it for me? Yeah, I don't have a number. I don't have a number on that. But you've done it though, right? Yeah. And me too. Me too. My my, my most recent um experience with that. Is is when, when I text you, I said I had a tough week. My brother-in-law passed away. So I was I was away in Florida for the funeral, and, and I'm looking. I'm like, God, you you heal so many other people. Why couldn't you have healed my brother-in-law? Like, why 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 couldn't you have done it? Right? And 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 I know a, a while ago we spoke about the good shepherd right? and him mm -hmm. being good no matter what. In that moment, I had to remind myself. I had to tell myself that. In spite of this, he's still good no matter what, right? And so we may have those moments where um, we realize, we may have those moments when we, when we ask God, you did it for them, why can't you do it for us, right? But we still have, we have to believe, we have to hold on to faith and believe that in the midst of it all, um, he's still a good God and he's going to do what's absolutely best. And that's the reason why he is God. Right, it, it's not for us to understand everything. It's for us to trust him. It's not our job. Our job is to trust him because he is God. Right? Yeah, I, I had to learn that, especially how crazy this year was for my personal life. Yeah. I got, I got, I got, I got, I got angry in so many situations. I'm like, God, why this happened? Why that happened? But, damn, you know, you gotta remind yourself that Jesus. Lord, God of Jehovah, he is great no matter what. And those stuff purposely happened, and there's a reason finding that. Some of the situations, I know the reason. Mine it now is certain stuff I don't. But I'm not going to let me not understand why something happened affect my relationship with God. Yeah, and that's it. That's it. Because sometimes it's, it's, it's so easy to, to slip, like, I really, in that moment, bro, I was like, yo, this is crazy. He ain't good. Like, even me, I'm like, yo, and this is in my head, right, obviously. Uh, but I had to tell myself, like, yo, he's still a good God. Like, he's still, when it broke my heart, seeing my sister and my niece, uh, it broke my heart. I had to tell myself, bro, as I sat there, he's still a good God. And, and we have to tell ourselves that. Right. Sometimes the devil will throw these darts at our minds and our heads and tell you, stop believing. Right? He's not good. Why did he do this? Why did he do that? But you have to tell yourself. You have to know that in the midst of it all, he's still a good God. Right? So 38, it says, Jesus was still angry as he arrived at the tomb. 
a cave with a stone rolled across its entrance. Roll the stone aside, Jesus told them. But Martha, the dead man's sister, protested, Lord, he had been dead for four days. The smell will be terrible. Jesus responded, didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believe? So they rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me, but I said it out loud for the sake of all these people standing here so that they will, be, so that they will believe you sent me. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound in grave clothes, his face wrapped in head cloth. Jesus told him, told them, unwrap him and let him go. Right. Wait, 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 wait. But what does this display? Right. This display the glory of God. And this display that Jesus spoke it into existence. And if you have faith in what God tell you he's going to do, you need to have faith in God because what he tell you he's going to do is going to happen. I'm going to say, I'm going to say that. Mm-hmm. Uh, what if he doesn't tell you? What if he doesn't tell you? Keep, still keep faith? Uh, they tell it, you or not? Keep, keep your faith? Mm-hmm. And if you don't see the situation getting better? Still keep faith? Keep faith. What if ultimately now the situation, situation does not change? Still keep faith. Still keep the faith, right? Because in all things, God understands what he's doing. He knows what's best, even when we don't understand, right? Even when it makes no sense to us, even when it comes at what we perceive to be a great loss for us, um, he's still in control and he knows best. It's, it's not our job to understand why or understand everything. That's his job. That's why he's God, right? But I, I just want to close out this story. Um, what we see in the in this story that Jesus revealed himself as he is the resurrection and the life. And we see that um, not even death um, could stop him, that he has power over death, right? And we don't only see this in his personal resurrection, but we see this in him raising other people from the dead as well. And, and we, we may not see such a miracle amongst us um, today, right? But that just goes to show um, that God is able to do absolutely any and everything, right? Um, for me, when I study scripture, I like to take it out of context um, and apply it to my life, right? And what I would do in this is Lazarus is dead. What I, what I want to speak to you about is God can speak to any dead situation, right? A dream, a vision, um, a business, a ministry, your life, your spiritual life, right? that God can speak to that situation. And though it looks dead, um, though it looks like it's, a, it's not going anywhere, it won't come back to life, God can speak to any situation, right? And he can say, get up, right? Unwrap yourself, right? That God is able to do anything. Um, so for me, sometimes to help apply the scripture and for it to make more sense to me, I take it out of the context of the story, right? And I see how it can apply to my life in a practical way, right? Um, so in this story, what would you say are your takeaways? takeaway is that whether you believe or you don't believe what's going to happen is going to happen regardless and the end result is still going to shock you whether you believed it is going to happen or not and if you if you uh, oh wait no um we don't need to question god or jesus because they know what they're doing Whatever they're doing is going to have a great benefit over your life. You know, I mean, obviously, we're going to come we gonna come up with all them types of questions. But what you need to do is that I know my father. 
I know I know his capability. I know what he do. I'm going to let him do what he got to do, and I'm going to follow along. And that's that's, 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 that's right. And that's tough. You know, we, we don't say it like it, it's easy. You know, yeah, I'm not. It's tough. Yeah. That's that's hard. It's really tough. So let me let me just wrap up so we could continue, and we don't have that that noise in the background. Um, exactly what you said. It's, it's not easy. So we don't say it as if it's the easiest thing in the world to do because it's not, right? But we are to trust him even when it becomes difficult. Right? to trust him even when we cannot see what he's going to do or understand what he's doing. We have to trust him. Um, for me, what I love with the scripture is the display of Jesus' emotion, that we know that he hurts when we hurt, right? that he understands what we're going through, those difficult and tough times in our lives. Like you said, 2020 has been challenging for you. Right? And he sees that. And he understands that. Right? And he's giving you strength each day to overcome that and to weather that and to keep going. Right? But I love so much to see his compassion. Um, the Bible says, um, cast the cares on him, before, for he careth for you. God cares. and God understands. Sometimes it's hard to perceive or believe that because we don't see his hand concerning what we may go through right away but he cares and he's always there for us. Um, so I love that. That's what stood out for me for the text. Other than him having power to, to resurrect the dead, but knowing that he cares, right? Anytime any, anyone asks you why Jesus wept, why did he weep? Jesus wept because when we hurt, he hurt. Lazarus, his friend, died and he saw us how... Um, Mary and Martha was crying, like unlike, like what I said before, because he saw his people hurt, he was hurt too, and he was built up with emotion. Not only because when we hurt, he hurt, but also Lazarus was his friend. If your friend died, you obviously will um, feel some type of way about it. Whether you cry or you don't, if you gonna feel hurt. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. I'm going to do my closing prayer, then the outro. All right, cool. Father God, we thank you. We praise you. We worship you, God. We thank you for this day that you have made. I will rejoice in God and God. I pray as today, if we and Brother Javi came together to discuss your word, God. We pray that any time we're going through our trials and tribulations, this tough time, that we'll never lose faith into you, God. We pray that we'll always remember that you allow stuff to happen. You always have a plan. You know what's best for us, God. We pray that we won't start questioning you in no bad way and start losing our faith in tough time, God. We pray that we'll always remember that when we're hurt, that you're hurt at the same time, God. We pray that we'll always remember that as we keep, always remember to keep a strong faith, God, because you are are so worthy, you are so mighty, and the thing that you do, the things that you can do is limitless, God. You can do anything to fix any type of situation, God, and we pray that we'll never forget that, God. I pray that the viewers that watch will be able to get that same message, God. I pray that they'll come to you in time to need. They'll be able to never lose faith in you, God. I pray that each and every week we'll be able to come together and deliver a good message unto you. Your people, God, we pray that you'll be able to speak to us each and every week, God. In Jesus, in your holy name, God, amen. Amen. Thank you guys for coming back to Bible study. This is Bible study episode 22. We'll be back next week. Don't forget to like, subscribe if you're new, comment what you got from today's video. This is Motivation for Young Christians. I'm out.